You're listening to a Time Machine podcast. Old movie Time Machine. An adventure through time and or space. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Old Movie Time Machine. This is a show in which we're watching a bunch of old movies and talking about them. There's a very lengthy explanation you can find on the first 50 episodes of this program. Jay-Z here. You guys, I love fall. Still loving fall. Joined as ever by my international panel of experts, starting with the one and only Shrish Manike. Hot snakes. Hey, Shrish. What's up? How's it going? Nice to see you. And, of course, joined across the ocean by my sister and yours, Carolyn Nowrose. Have a cookie. Hey there. Hey, sis. Good. <laughs> Have a good you. <laughs> And who could forget her? Uh, you know her, you love her. We call her the Hammer, Catherine Sherlock. Where did you get that funny accent? Are you from Harvard or something? Is in the house. Hey, Catherine. Welcome back to the program. Good evening. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, guys, it's, Hitch- it's Hitchcocktober, as we've been talking about, of course. Season two, we are in the middle of what they call these days spooky season, uh, during which time we watch uh, some thrillers and some chillers from cinema's most talented and most uh, perverted handsy uh, iconic director, Alfred Hitchcock, of course. This week... We are talking about 1954's Jimmy Stewart's, Grace Kelly's, Alfred Hitchcock's, Raymond Burr's uh, Rear Window. Ooh, I can sense your excitement from here. Let's start off with some one-line reviews from our talented panelists, starting with uh, Shrishi Boo. You have a one-line review for Rear Window? I do have a one-line right, one review. Hit us. Um, apart from his weird accent that he has going on again. Um, I suppose being a peeping Tom pays off sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, it's a great point. I'm filled with questions. I'm sure we're going to tackle all of these issues. This guy's doing a lot of peeping. He's doing a lot of peeping. If he was more ambulatory, I think he'd be doing some creeping too. I think he'd be sneaking <laughs> with his peeping. Carolyn Nauros, do you have a one-line review for Rear Window? Yes. Um, Rear Window is uh, a sexy little murder mystery. Oh, interesting take. How There's do you mean? Like you know making out means. Yes. They, they, lots of um, beautiful Grace Kelly sitting in Jimmy Stewart's lap, just, just smooching on him. Mm-hmm. Murder makes her hot, wow. I guess. That, that, that wasn't bad to look at at all. <laughs> Not a bit. We're going to be talking a lot about Grace Kelly and her face this episode, I have a feeling. Uh, but before we get there, Catherine, <laughs> you're being joined tale. by yeah. our... He's going um, to the bit tomorrow. <laughs> Is it broken? Why? Because he's got... Drip know. We're talking yeah, about something's not first. right anyway. Something's amiss. <laughs> I think he's quite amazed here. Uh, he does not have his uh, triangular cat-shaped headphones on right now, but he is uh, present and with us in, in spirit. Uh, but Catherine, do you have a one-line review for Rear Window? Yes, I do. An almost perfect view. Oh, I see what you did there. I got you. Okay, so has anybody seen this movie before, by mm-hmm. the way, before we Yeah, a long time it? ago. Yeah. What was your one-line review, Justin? Uh, Shrishma, if you recall last episode, we decided to do away with my one-line reviews because, uh, number one, I do too much talking. Number two, I'm going to be um, summarizing this film for you very shortly. So, you know, nobody needs it. You're going to be hearing plenty from me. Okay, I suppose. It, it's okay? Yeah. You know what else it's okay. I love? Fall. Still loving fall over here. It is Hitchcocktober. <laughs> Never forget. Um. <laughs> Shrishma, you can have access to these drops anytime you actually want to make it over to the studio. You can push all the buttons. I'll get them all set up. It's there. happening. Okay. I blame um, my place of employment. Some people consider this to be one of, or like the Hitchcock movie of all Hitchcock movies. This is uh, some people's favorites. If you can believe it. I think it's pretty good myself. Yep. I would agree uh, with that. Hence not the per- to- perfect view. Almost. Yeah. Now, 
what is so imperfect about it, Catherine? If I might ask, like what what is uh, what takes? Why is it only it? almost perfect? Almost, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, I mean, I don't think anything can be perfect, but this gets damn close. I mean, mm-hmm. love the well, visuals. I mean, the the cast, the I mean, the, the dresses. The, the story, the way it all plays out, it's, you know, genuinely damn fine movie. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's pretty sturdy. It's got good bones. It's got a good look. It is. It has lasted this long. It's been beautifully restored in the past um, 10, 15 years. It looked fantastic if you find it. We hope that you do, of course. Did you know they remade this movie? No. With Christopher Reeves, apparently. Oh really? Like remember the old post post accident? Yeah. I'm a, I'm assuming pre pre accident pre accident. Okay. Oh That's wow. Or foreshadowing. That is uh, yeah, yeah. wow. Ooh. Uh wow. Okay, so that would have been like when did that come out? Nineteen ninety eight is what um, good old Google is telling me. Oh, so oh, I think maybe it's post accident. Post accident. Post yeah, accident. it looks like it is post accident because he's okay, sitting okay. in a chair. Well, then I love it. Then, then I'm glad that he's empowered and he can be hired for for roles that right. that suit him. I guess um, that was the premise yeah. of the movie that he's a quadriplegic and a okay. former architect who now uses a wheelchair and relieves the boredom of his daily existence by engaging in voyeurism. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Peeping, being a peeping Tom, yeah. and watching. <laughs> Most uh, like Alfred Hitchcock, he's a voyeur. Oh, this is, oh, this yeah. is so Hitchcock. Let's just get into. It. Let me let's let me read the summary of the first act here. Okay, L. B. Jeffries, known as Jeff, is a war veteran and daredevil photographer known for taking pictures in dangerous and remote areas. He is laid up with a broken leg, meaning his life is limited to his apartment. He spends most of the day watching his neighbors out the back window, which affords him a view of the residence block's courtyard. At this point, his primary objective is to not commit to his girlfriend, Lisa, a classy, funny woman who loves him for some reason, despite him being an utter pill. Let's talk about how this movie opens. Let's talk about Jeff. Let's talk about Lisa. Let's talk about their dynamic. Anybody want to start? Please feel free. I think one of the things that holds up uh, that's very unique about this film is sort of the um, inner courtyard of a New York neighborhood. Uh, Now, Mm -hmm. Justin, you and I have both lived in New York. Um, I'm sure Catherine and Trishma have both visited, uh, but it definitely, those characters are all still like kind of people that you would come across if you lived in New York and you could very easily see how this would, you would sort of get like an obsession with figuring out what's going on with the neighbors. Yeah. And I think this is a thing that happens. Look, so I, uh, I spend a lot of time at home currently and I'll tell you, I, that means that I spend a lot of time looking out my window and seeing just what is going on outside can't help it. It's just what my world is right now. And uh, right now it's a lot of poor parallel parking. That's what I'm noticing. But I mean, <laughs> there's, this, there's not much happening around your way, surely. Mm, I mean, aside from the planes landing and taking off, which is entertaining in itself, but yeah, I don't know. You'd be surprised. You can, you, you see a lot of people walking their dogs. I got a, I got a line on everybody taking doggies out for walkies. Who's doing what, you know, I, somebody started smoking recently. That was interesting. Like, Oh, just out there having a little mm. private time for themselves while taking doggy out. Okay. Gotcha. Like, um, cigarettes or like you can smell the wafting. of. The oh, head. I was going to assume that it was cigarettes. Okay. Uh, which is, you know, rare. Uh, this is a country that likes to put their nicotine in pouches, mouth pouches. So yeah, uh, that is just, true. But this is, yes. Yeah, so w- what we're talking about here is that most of this movie is seen, I think all of this movie is seen from Jeff's living room. So we're just mm-hmm. seeing what he sees, which is uh, fragmented glimpses at his neighbor's lives, basically. So we get uh, establishing shots right away for this. And we're meeting Miss Lonely Hearts, who is a woman who lives by herself and uh, just wants some company. Uh, we have got some newlyweds. We've got 
uh, an older couple who are very hot in their apartment and sleeping out on the balcony. Keep sleeping on the, the balcony, the artist lady, the yes, um, songwriter. Um, yes, yes. And the salesman, of course, who could forget Lars Thorwald, the salesman. The salesman. But before and we his get to him, bedridden wife, as well as the yes. dancer. And the dance, yes, Miss Torso. Yes, Miss Tor- Torso. Now, and the, what a torso that is. Yeah. The, uh, the artist, AKA Miss Hearing Aid, uh, she, we have seen her before. She is played by Jesslyn Fax, and she plays one of the old ladies at. Uh, who lives in the boarding house with Luther at Ghost and Mr. Chicken or in Ghost and Mr. Chicken. She plays not the one who's talking about Bon Abbey all the time, but the other one who's always talking about, uh, uh, you know, a person's never dead until their pulse is stopped, Luther. That one. She plays um, Miss Hearing Aid, the artist. And it's weird to see her 10 years younger than she is in Ghost and Mr. Chicken and also exposing uh, her backside like she's pretty like it's hot it's the summer in the city so she's dressed down pretty well and it's bizarre to see uh shrishman like though what do you got for us i was gonna ask of all the the windows that we could view into who was your favorite oh great question i love the songwriter myself uh, i like seeing him you know drinking and smoking and and banging away trying to trying to finish that Dang hit tune. I like to see it. But what about yeah. Carolyn? What do you like? Who do you like? You miss torso or are you a I mean, of course I like the the dancer, but then I'd also say, hey, I'd be that kooky lady putting my dog in a basket to go to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> Sleeping <laughs> on my fire escape. Because I'd be too hot. I'd be like, fuck this. I need some air movement. <laughs> right, right. Catherine, who would which one would you like to peep at the most? <laughs> Um, I, I don't know that I would like to peep at any of them particularly, but um, I mean, I, I like the whole tapestry of everything, you know, that whole kind mm-hmm. of introduction um, shot to his view and all of the different windows. And, you know, it's that, you know, the alarm clock goes off, it's the morning, they all wake up in their own different ways, you know, mm-hmm. there's the one with the bird and they, you know, take the cover off the bird. And yeah, that, it's that, a, it's an incredible no. set. I mean, this. Yeah, bizarre. I think that, that's the thing. The whole the whole set is just jaw dropping, really, when you think about it and how it's right. been set up right. in order to like have this 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 amazing view out. I mean, yeah. that is a set that I, that's one where I'm like, I really want to visit that particular set because yeah. it was done in such a cool, great way, and it's so interesting to film and. Um, but I also feel like, okay, Jimmy Stewart's great, but let's talk about how great Grace Kelly is. Mm. Like he's class personified. I want every and outfit. She can do so much better than him. I don't know why she was crying God. over this dumb man. This is my question. You guys, <laughs> I, the it entire makes me time. curious to know what he is really like when he's out and about being like a photojournalist that's going to war zones and like doing all these dashing, daring things. Is he kind of Indiana Jones? And she's like, Oh, I like to have this sense of adventure in my life. <laughs> he is not. It, it didn't seem like she was trying to change him to like, Oh, what about getting your own studio and taking portraits and settling down and things. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ultimately, I feel like these two want different things. Mm-hmm. I mean, she shouldn't have to be making like a real hard sell to you know to marry me, Grace Kelly. Like it should. She shouldn't have to no. be pitching so hard. Like no. I mean the want the, hat, the the nurse got it like bang on. She's like perfect. Like why are you even? Yeah. Why are you like, enjoying this one, sunshine? Mm-hmm. Just like um, which. Yeah. I appreciate that they had the nurse actually say that because she is so legitimately perfect that if they didn't have someone in the cast saying that you would be like, what, Jim, what the fuck Jimmy Stewart? Really? <laughs> Give me a break. Yeah. Even the movie is aware of that. Grace Kelly is starring in right. it. <laughs> that it's like, uh, <laughs> what, what is his problem? Well, so what do you guys think from, you know, what do you think is going on in Jeff's mind at this point that he cannot, first of all, let's talk about Grace's intro, by the way. Uh, The first time I saw this movie, I think it was projected. And 
I'll tell you, you've never lived until you've seen Rear Window projected and seen a full movie theater just filled with Grace Kelly's face just coming at you. Like they, it's just her face, her perfect face coming right at the camera. And they they play with the speed of the film too. Like they sort of slow it down as she kisses him awake and then they put it back up to normal speed. Um, but it's like, it's shocking to see almost it's just like well, it's uh, yeah. almost too much. I mean, I, saw, I thought it was shocking just like, you know, watching At home, really. on my couch. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was just yeah. like, wow, there was a it lot was, of It was almost a bit creepy things. a little bit because there was this shadow coming in and then she was just kind of there and you're a bit like, is this woman a bit mad? Is that why he doesn't want to be with her? <laughs> there was a question, like, is she a bit stalky as well? Like... Hold on. Does she have his voodoo doll or it's Munchausen's by proxy? Because she's trying to keep him home long enough to like get him to propose to her. So I broke mm-hmm. his leg. Well, she does get that second leg broken eventually. So we, yeah, you might you might be right there. So because he is wheelchair bound for as long as we know him. But she is into this guy. She loves him. She's she's openly saying, like, this isn't even a will they, won't they? She's like, I'm in love with you. And I want to spend my life with you. And also you are, and I looked this up, but Jimmy Stewart's 46 in this movie. So, okay, Mr. Adventure Pants, like what time do we wind this down? Because Mm, the clock is ticking. If you want to just be a loner at the ends of the earth, then then just say so, you know? Oh, I'm sorry. Is he legitimately at least 20 to 25 years older than her in this movie? I don't know how, how old she was when this was. She's young. Toward. Yeah, I would imagine. I mean, she was in her 20s when she did all of her films, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so because then a... she stopped working. Because then she got, she became a princess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The tiara on it. Well, now, I, I actually do have some experience of professional dating a professional photographer. Actually. And I have right. to say, they absolutely nailed it. <laughs> In terms of <laughs> the amount of like gear everywhere and yeah. his absolute obsession with, you know, everything that he's doing is like the most important thing ever. Um, and actually I'm not going to make any space in my life for anyone else. Yeah. Hence why I dumped him. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> you I, wanted someone that wanted to pay attention to you. Well, yeah, I actually have a relationship yeah, with yeah, me, something that wasn't yeah. just a coffee on a Saturday morning for an hour, if I would right. like it. It's all or, glamorous or, and romantic. Or, or having plans, like, completely change. I mean, don't get me wrong, there were some there were some really nice things that happened, and at one point I got flown up to Akari, with, you know, to be his assistant, but, I, you know, all of it was, like, free, the flight was free, all of that kind of business. Um so there was there was some there was some really interesting things that happened, but at the same time there was an awful lot of absolute chaos and not being considered in any way. <laughs> yeah, which is not which attractive, is awful. right? And that's it's and and ultimately, as as you have just told us, not sustainable either. So no. I mean, I was shocked. Like she comes over, she kisses him awake. He's like, I'm not into you at all. I, 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 I'm too busy. I'm too exciting a man uh, to to love you forever. And he, but he, of <laughs> course, being being a man, he really would like to maintain the status quo, which is you come over and kiss on me and serve me fucking lobster thermidor, and and Making then you drinks. go home, and then I go do whatever I want to do. <laughs> and so, yeah, but, so but like, you know, but you're too perfect. So like, yeah, get out. Get out of my life. You're too perfect. It's, it's not me. It's you. Have you ever yeah, dated exactly. anybody who's too perfect? Wrong with me and my commitment issue. I think I've definitely been too perfect for certain relationships. <laughs> I'm actually. <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> but you know, um, the scene where she enters and she kisses him and does all of that. Yeah. I honestly initially thought it was a dream sequence. Okay, I was what like, made that, you, what, yeah, okay. it could have been, yeah. Just because he was, sleep- and I was like, where did this, who is this gorgeous woman? Just like, this cannot be the lady that they were just referring to in the <laughs> conversation before. Um, I know this is not the woman he's whining about. 
Right? Um, oh, but it is. Like, but it is. Yes. <laughs> Oh my God. So I found that quite quite entertaining. This movie, if done in today's culture, might start out with Grace Kelly being like her character being like, I love you so much, I want to be with you. But it would entirely end up flipping the script and being like, fuck this shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not putting up with your with, with your shenanigans, you idiot. I, yeah. I just can't believe that she comes back like the next day. She's like, I want to spend the week with you. They have their argument where, you know, I can't commit to somebody who's beautiful. You won't see me, me for a very long time. Or at least until, until tomorrow. Until tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow night. Yeah. And, and <laughs> the next thing you know, time. she's all curled up, smooching on him. And uh, he is so disinterested. I, I just don't, I don't understand this. Don't get it. Right. And she like packs, she d- packs a tiny purse with pajamas so she can no, stay over, over. Her, yeah. i mean her little nighty her little and he's nighty. like well i uh, yeah, i don't like, know how to deal with that satin number i mean are we supposed to assume that they're because it's the 1950s that they're not having sex because like their smooching is very intimate it is yeah it's pretty steamy and yeah. I, i'm sure they actually hinted at that a little bit because I think right. he was a bit like, oh, well, I, I you know, I'm, I'm a little bit like uh, limited. There's, there's in only my one life. bed. Where, where will oh. you sleep? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> right. it's ludicrous. And that's the start of the movie. That's the first half hour of this movie is just him inexplicably not being mad for Grace Kelly. It doesn't make any fucking, while she waits hand and foot on him. It's ridiculous. <laughs> He's such a pill. Uh, and and she lives this. I mean, the outfit. Oh my god! And she lives this fabulous life. I mean, is she some sort of fashion magazine editor or something? I'm getting mm. the sense. I believe so. I mean, she's the cover of that magazine we see at the beginning, right? So she's a model. So she's a model. Yeah. So uh, maybe that's what she's talking because she says like we spent, you know, we sell like eleven of these a day or something or whatever she says, a dozen a day of those very expensive dresses, right? Um, so I'm wondering, yeah, something along those lines, but she's not an idiot. She's not a, um, she's not shallow. She has depth. She can hold a conversation. She's got a mind in that beautiful noggin of hers. Uh, respect Jimmy Stewart, Jeff, excuse me, get it together. But also let's uh, acknowledge the filmmaker, and his love affair also with Grace Kelly. This is all, this is the same year as dial M for murder. So this was Hitch's like year of grace. I'm just, I've decided that for a living, I work with Grace Kelly every day. I cast her in my stuff. And then I just uh, look at her through my camera. So, I mean, talk, talk about, about a voyeur. <laughs> exactly. I mean, this is, so we talk about this sometimes it's the, traditionally it's the male gaze where, the camera Go. serves the function of a man sort of objectifying a woman or, you know, taking in a woman as a, a physical object rather than the substance that lies within. You know, we're seeing movement towards the female gaze as well, towards men and, you know, other women or, you know, whatever the case may be, whatever the dynamic is. But this is, I mean, no no more clearly is this illustrated than in this movie, which is about looking at Grace Kelly and also looking at neighbors out the window and watching somebody watch somebody. I mean, it's all big. It's it's a whole big cyclical. Everybody's watching everybody. Well, if you think about, um, for example, Miss Lonely Hearts, the female neighbor, uh, Mm -hmm. she is a character to be pitied to a certain extent, whereas the songwriter who's also single yes. is mm. not to be pitied. Like That's he's true. just a single guy. So, so there's, you know, we, in this well, time period, some things to just think about where it's like, you know, the difference between a single woman and a single man is, is pretty clearly portrayed in this movie, or at least the time period, the 1950s view of what that would be. A spinster, sure. Miss Lonely yeah. Hearts. Like she's titled Miss Lonely Hearts. It's yeah, and it's even visibly portrayed because he's his apartment is pretty high right. up. It's like third floor, and she's down at garden level. So right. I mean, we automatically just looking at her that way from his window. We're gonna right. She's she's beneath where we would like her to be anyway. 
Right. But, so. you know, this is all of this looking and ignoring Grace Kelly is great, but also makes for a very dull movie until there's a murder, you guys. Yeah. Jeff and Lisa or argue about this. There? Or is there? Jeff and Lisa argue about their future together, but fortunately, Jeff hears a distracting scream that enables him to put this conversation on the back burner. Mm -hmm. Jeff, pers <laughs> Jeff proceeds to observe Mr. Thorwald, a neighboring salesman, behaving suspiciously after the sudden disappearance of his invalid wife. Jeff starts throwing his murder conspiracy ideas at Lisa, his nurse Stella, and his detective friend Doyle, and they agree that it's weird. But I Doyle's mean, but who like, hasn't done this? Haven't well, you been exactly. like, look, that person's a serial killer or that person's a pedophile? Like, haven't you looked at someone and been like, that's shady as fuck? I think we all, we're all making judgment calls <laughs> all the time when saying. we're looking at everybody all day, every mm -hmm. day. I would agree. You know. And ultimately, all this comes down to is that Doyle does some some light detective work and discovers that everything is above board and there's a perfectly reasonable explanation for everything. But what do you guys make of this part of the film? The intrigue, you guys. What happened to Mrs. Thorwald? We see her. Um, she is laid up in bed, and he tends to her, and and then mm, she's just mysteriously gone one day. I think? I think what this shows is that, uh, to a certain extent, it's saying that New York's a big enough city that you're not necessarily going to know what's happening in each apartment. And therefore there might be perfectly reasonable explanations that someone has gone missing. If the police just do a cursory investigation, but if you've been laid up being a peeping Tom from your window with your big ass <laughs> camera lens, you might notice some odd behaviors that people are doing in their home that they wouldn't do in front of other people. Of course. And I you think know. it's one of one of the best parts uh, of the craft behind this film is the fact that because we're seeing everything from Jeff's POV, mm -hmm. all we're seeing are limited glimpses at these people, just what we can see through his window and through their window. And also the same thing goes for the, the audio, the, the scraps of conversation when right. uh, Thorwald's wife is sort of like heckling him from the bedroom. Like we're just getting just... Right. Just a little bit, just a word here and there. and just. I thought one of the it. best devices, and it's a small thing, but an amazing thing in this film was every time, once, once we get towards sort of like end of second act, beginning of third act, and it's really like ratcheting up in the tension, is that 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 particular apartment Thorwald's apartment is dark and all you see is him mm. the end of his cigarette yes, yes. A like you either see him laying on the couch and it's, there's just smoke coming if yep. it's during the day or you see in the dark completely dark apartment and just the lit end of the cigarette and that to me is like that then they point that out where they're like look everyone else came to the window when the dog mm -hmm. showed up dead mm -hmm. Except yeah. for one apartment. I mean, and those are the things that unless you're sitting there doing surveillance, you're not necessarily good. Like we all have habits and we all have like routines that we go through every day. You probably go to work the same way. You probably um, stop at the same stores, et cetera. Like it's really, you know, easy. This is what nowadays we would say, oh, hey, like they're phone tracking or they're, why is that person there like that like when they go and they pull those like phone records and it's peeing from towers right, right. or they're looking at like you know if your location was tracked and breaks in your behavior breaks in your behavior because they can pretty much go through and like like some of them for me they'd be like oh yeah she goes to the barn and she goes to the grocery store and that's about it well, you know like right. and spends the, she go to the last 10 days yeah. she has <laughs> right. right but in the last 10 days she's in the middle of the ocean uh in the bermuda triangle and hasn't moved mm -hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. that's weird curious curious same thing applies to this but we're not looking at like an electronics record we're looking at like okay someone did old school surveillance mm -hmm. This is Jay-Z again, interrupting myself, no doubt. Bringing you today's ad read. The whole gang's here. We are looking at our T Public store, of course. Just having a browse. Do you guys see any designs you would like to explore? Oh, actually, strike that. I want to talk about this darn cat, because we just sold one of these recently. Somebody just paid some money for, screw it, we're watching that darn cat, the t-shirt. 
it's both a, a no, promise and, and a threat that was made to Catherine Sherlock. We have yes. yet to go, th- go through with it. <laughs> What's that? We've yet to enact that clause. Yes, yes exactly. Uh oh. Oh, is that a twenty percent off? off. Oh my God. What? I don't know if that will be valid by the time this comes out. But guys, there are always steals of deals over at T Public, and we encourage you to go over and explore and find the design that you want. Because maybe you don't want just um, screw it. We're watching that darn cat, both a threat and a promise for your friend and mine, Catherine Sherlock. Maybe you want instead a, a hoodie. Or a tank. Oh, let's look at these tanks, shall we? We've got the tank top. Oh, oh look my at that. God. That is Here's a look. It actually comes in white beaters. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you can choose any color that you want. Real. I mean, well, I mean, any color that they have. I mean, you could get it in red, Catherine. You could get it in black. You could get it in red. Um, you could get it in black. No, I'm kidding, of course. Uh, <laughs> navy as well. And just royal blue. I mean, all the blues. And uh, if you want something more summery, you know, get yourself a nice heather. A classic white. Yes, it's a you know, it's it's available for you right now on our T Public store. The link is in the show notes. The show notes, as ever, are those words attached to this very podcast you are listening wherever you are listening to it. And uh, if you buy uh, one of those, or you know, five or seven, like why stop at just one, gang? Uh, we're gonna thank you, like we will right now. Let's give it a test round, guys. One, two, three. Thank you. Thank you. you. <laughs> thank, thank, you. thank you. I got to tell you that my favorite part of this set is the glimpse that we get of the street behind the set, yeah. like oh, yeah. the other, like that just, one corner. Just that, that one, one little crack of between of between the buildings where you get mm. a glimpse of mm-hmm. yeah, just the street and then oh. the bar across the street, mm. which has its own like depth and action happening there. Yep. I mean, like that. Oh, I love that. I mean, if you're gonna deal with one set and make it interesting, that's a way to do it. I I haven't even done a Google search. Is there are there pictures of this set that they made for this? Like, I guess that's why I'm be. so curious to see like how much of it was like forced perspective, you know? I'm not sure. Do you remember going to Universal Studios? They used to have like a Hitchcock, like behind the scenes type of thing where they would talk mm. about his films. Yeah. I feel like this set was part of that. I could be totally wrong about that, but I feel like they had kind of recreated part of this as a, as a background maybe. I'm not really sure, but uh, it would be interesting to look into more into what the set's deal is. And how do we get it back? Build it again. Like, who wouldn't want to wander around there? That sounds great. Who wouldn't want to do a murder mystery party there? Oh, my Pop God. Residency. That would be amazing. Uh, right? Yeah, oh, it would be fantastic. And Because you could have it like a haunted house type thing. Like, for sure. Oh, I love it. Like, yeah. weird, like, things going on in each space. And, yeah. So, Shrishma, you had not seen this before, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, so where are you at in your viewing experience at this point when it's sort of like, did this guy kill his wife or not? And it's all sort of vague and nobody's really quite sure what is real and what is not. What are you thinking as an audience member? Um, I feel like I thought it was a, there was, I feel like it was going towards the conclusion that he did kill his wife. Um, but like with most Hitchcocks, I don't know, like, I guess there was some mystery to it, but it was more of like how they were going to solve it rather than did he do it or not, if that makes sense. So it was more a matter of like, is he going to get away with this? Right. Like, Like, are they going to catch him? Like, how are they going to like, how is this going to play out versus did he do it or not? But that being said, like, it was like, I was enjoying the movie. I enjoyed the, you know, up to this point, like as annoying as, Jimmy Stewart was. Um, <laughs> it was. What's yeah, the most was, annoying was, part of him for you? What's the, what annoys you? Just the, the way he was Stewart? whining the whole time, um, and the way he was treating Grace Kelly. Like she deserves much more respect than he was giving her. Um, What's your recommend for Grace Kelly at this point? Let's say you're Grace's girlfriend. She invites you out for a coffee, and she's like, "I just went to see Jeff. I just made this motherfucker lobster. Had lobster brought over." from the Ritz and oh, I'm dick. trying to get this dude off and he is not into it. Like, what do you tell her? Walk. <laughs> <laughs> get out of there. 
Yeah. Um, plenty, plenty of bland white men who look like Jimmy Stewart there there are, who, yeah. who, who want to live with I, you. I guess maybe she genuinely does find him interesting and different. Maybe. I'm sure at his best, because I was wondering about, I have a note here about like, do we always, do we think Jeff is always so defeatist or is this because of his cast? Like, mm. so he is, you know, we could look at his situation as some kind of metaphor for, uh, the perils of aging and time. And, you know, as we get older, we're not able to uh, slam dunk that basketball anymore or, wh- or whatever the case may be. And this makes us feel less than we once were or whatever. You know, maybe he's going through these sorts of things. Mr. You know, he's a, he's a veteran, uh, you know, so he fought in the war and he also he, he sort of chases this high of excitement and danger and it caught up with him. And now he's just got to fucking sit around with himself. And that's where he, and probably why he would like to get out of the house and go to Kashmir and cover the uprising there or whatever's happening. And because he just can't stand to live with himself. Yes. Um, <laughs> so it's just surprising, I guess, that he would even bother with status quo with Grace. I mean, it's, I guess it's nice to have a shockingly beautiful woman come over and give you lobster and smooches, but, <laughs> but also like, she seems to have desires and wants that he is not anywhere near ready to give her. So I don't, I don't know where this guy is at anyway. So that whole scenario then, uh, why do we think that he's so whiny? (laughs) Yeah, maybe, I mean, maybe being in a cast for like six weeks, will do that to you. Yeah. And then stuck in like a, like a two room apartment in New York heat. That's yes. got to be grim, right? Yeah, for sure. To to a point where you're already uncomfortable because of the cast, but also because you can't even change clothes easily and you can't get in or out of bed easily. And so he just- I'm assuming he's room. having to have sponge baths. You know, he, he can't do anything uh, for himself. That's probably part of Stella's routine, right? Like mm. that, that we're not seeing is that she comes over and- yeah, she doesn't just give him an, a liniment rub or whatever. Damn, yeah. I could do a lin- do a liniment rub right now. It does sound it's nice. Good. Anybody have um, Grace Kelly's phone number? Um, nice I'll dial, dial ourselves to heaven. Wasn't that a movie? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's the title of that movie uh, that you was, just invented? Was Le- leave her to uh, heaven, wasn't it? Leave her to oh yeah, leave her to heaven. Dial M for heaven. It's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, no not you, Roger. That's Roger, the lawyer. Carolyn, you were gone for Roger, but we talked about him last week. He's uh, the Sorry. lawyer for uh, um, Dial M for Murder who gets a phone call. Ah. He's, he has never had a phone call before. You can tell just by what he sounds like. Whoa. He's just like baffled that so anybody happy. is calling him. <laughs> I love it. And Roger, back in Hello? the day. Don't worry about it. He's mystified that anybody would be calling for his services. But they were, and he was there to answer. So... Here's to you, Roger. Anyway, so they are they're doing their sleuthing from afar, and he calls his old war buddy, Tom Doyle, who's a detective over, who is very he indulges his his laid up friend Jeff, and he, he just does a little bit of again light snooping, very simple snooping, and he's just like, Yeah, they left early while you were sleeping, you perv, constantly watching. They can only <laughs> enter and leave. Uh, without being seen when when you're asleep because you're watching them all the time like a creeper. Uh, they left early in the morning and she's upstate. And uh, and we have a postcard that backs this up and there were witnesses. And uh, you're out of your league, Jeff. Well, time to get a life. Time for you to you know get out of that cast and marry Grace Kelly if, if you want to. And so that's, that's basically the end of the movie, you guys, is that it just turned out to be a whole bunch of... Wait a minute. That's, that's not... <laughs> really the end of things is it because another neighbor's curious dog is found killed in the courtyard after sniffing around a suspicious flower bed in the thorwald's backyard jeff discovers the flower bed has been disturbed in the past couple weeks amplifying his suspicions lisa who is still hanging out with this guy for some reason starts doing his legwork for him delivering vague but menacing messages digging up the flower bed and breaking into the thorwald apartment where she is caught by him and quickly arrested. Thorwald spots Jeff watching and enters his apartment to find out what the deal is. He throws him out a window, breaking Jeff's other leg, but is arrested by the police who arrive in the nick of time. 
Later, Lisa watches over Jeff as he recovers. Their differences seemingly resolved, but not really. So this is our thrilling, I mean, a very tense act of filmmaking here. Uh, when she, when Grace Kelly gets sent over there, rather willingly, she's excited to have an adventure. I get it. But like, it's a murderer, Grace Kelly. What are you doing? When she sneaks into that apartment and he shows up, I mean, it's shocking, right? Like, it makes me feel bad anyway. Where were you guys at with it? When they're digging up that flower bed, when she starts, when she she calls an audible and she's like, oh, by the way, I'm just going to go in there. Like, that's crazy, right? I think um, she was pretty bold. Uh, super bold. Super bold. But also she was, in a way, trying to impress him. Yes. Which like, you don't need to do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, and then like really putting herself in danger for his theory, which I thought was very sacrificial of her. Um, yeah, that's true. And it's not like she doubts him. She's kind of, it's, it's a pretty short walk for her to be like, you know what? This is suspicious. Tell me more about what you've been watching nonstop. Like she, you know, she thinks it's ridiculous at first, because it, I mean, it is ridiculous that he's not paying attention to Grace Kelly giving him lobster, but, uh, but it's pretty, it becomes pretty apparent that there's something amiss. Something is, is bizarre across the courtyard. So I don't know. Um, would you guys do this for your others? Would you go investigate a murderer's house uh, by yourself? Probably not. If your boo asked you to. Okay. No, okay. But I, I, I don't know. I don't know that she was doing it to just impress him. I think genuinely she's got more to her than the pretty dresses and the society lifestyle that oh, he's got her agreed. peg as. Mm -hmm. So this is almost like a side of her that, you know, you know, she, through, through this mystery, um, she's able to sort of um, express a side of, yeah, a side of herself that, you know, society doesn't let women express so, yeah, she's climbing fire escapes and, like, digging, you know, digging up um, people's gardens and climbing over fences and getting into danger and stuff. Because there's just more to her than all of that. Yeah, I think she does genuinely enjoy this kind of adventure. Uh, I would agree with you. I mean, I'd do it. Just for funsies? <laughs> s and Gs? Well, I mean... If you got the time... I don't, I, he, I, but that's like, okay, I, that's, it's kind of hard for me to say that because these are like, like, this is like dumb shit that I do for my job. Well, but would you break into his house yeah, to look for evidence? Go no. Well, she's no. out of her mind. That's, cr that was a crazy move on her part. Like, I give her a lot of credit. Like, she was bold. She was clever. Like, again, and this was a, a, another great example of like only seeing a fragment of what's actually happening over there. There's a time when you can't see her in his apartment and he's trying, uh, Jeff is trying to like get a line on where she right. like, is she hiding or what. And then she kind of like emerges you know, in front of the window and all this, but it's terrifying. It's a really scary scenario. Yeah. You, you, you are genuine. I was genuinely like, Ooh, see what happens. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, that still works. I mean, this yeah. is, um, you know, what is this now? Uh, almost 60 years old, this movie. Where am I? Longer wait, fifty four. Yeah, but it's still seventy. Still up. My God, seventy years old. Yeah, this holds up pretty well. Am I doing my maths right? There is seventy years old. Yeah, sixty, sixty nine years old, something like that. Fifty four. Yeah, sixty. Sixty. No, sixty. Excuse seventy. Me. <laughs> no, you this, from this movie, right? You mean when this movie came out? Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Do this movie math? was fifty six or something like that. Uh, yeah, 69 years old. There it is. That's the official mathematics on it as of this recording. So, uh, the fact that we're still getting Sorry. what's that? It's nearly 70, <laughs> right? Even better. Um, so, but <laughs> this is still eliciting emotions from its, its audience 70 years later. I mean, I felt something anyway, but that's pretty good. That's a, that's a quality quality film right there uh the, so both of these movies that we've watched for hitchcocktober this year are basically about the perfect murder you know and if you have any interest in murder mysteries or whatnot like you are also fixated on the idea of the perfect 
murder. Now, dial in for murder. I mean, on the surface, we talked about it, it looks like a very well-constructed plot, but really shit goes off the rails as soon as humanly possible because of humans going off the rails, as they will do. Uh, and this one, he almost gets away with it. He would have gotten away with it as far as we're concerned, uh, if he had not killed the dog, do we think that he really needed to strangle the goddamn dog? Why not? If you vanished your wife, vanish the dog. Why strangle a dog and then just leave him out in the backyard? Doesn't make sense to me, you guys. I mean, yeah. I mean, I honestly, I think like, okay, if you, especially if you've already moved the body, then why? Why would you strangle the dog? Yeah. Because you're so, just giving them one more reason to not drop the case because they had dropped it. Up until the the dog died. They had just, yeah, they had just decided like, well, I guess it is exactly as it appears to be. And the end, again, end of movie. Except the other thing, I think the device in a cinematic sense, um, it it is reconfirming and pulling at the heart, heart strings a little bit more because, okay, we could kind of, not that it justifies him killing his wife, but like, wow, she must have been a piece of work if he's going to like want to want to kill her yeah right? they could but have a, maybe a dog a defenseless dog that's just simple and innocent and sweet i mean like that's where you're like wow you are a heartless bastard just poking yeah. around in the yeah. flower bed I, I got it here's an idea for you though thorwald if you're gonna do that if you feel like you need to eliminate the neighboring dog problem uh just dig up that flower bed put that body put that dog body under the very flowers it was sniffing at you know, mm. end of discussion. Nobody's going to know who's to know, but let's wrap up this episode. Do we have any final thoughts on this? Mm. Uh, any, anything uh, remaining that we need to address other than just the inexplicable uh, lack of love and affection for Grace Kelly? Uh, well, I think her. that comes around uh, in the end, doesn't it? So like towards the very end there, when it all comes to a head. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, they trauma bond a little bit, right? Like they, yeah. they go through this shared experience. I mean, is that the foundation that you want to build your house on, though? For God's sake, get out of there, Grace. Get out of there. But I thought she was a little munchausen Z at the end, even. Like, you know, he's still sitting in his chair and she's kind of reading her magazine, looking at him. Interesting. So he shows now, up with another broken limb. For those for our <laughs> listeners who were not here pre-recording, like explain the Munchausen syndrome for our audience. Munchausen by proxy is by proxy. Yeah. By proxy. That is the actual term. Um, it it would be like uh, someone in a caregiving role. Oftentimes, it's a parent, um, but it could be a spouse. It could be a child caring for an elderly parent. Like, but anyone, someone in a caretaking role. M- Making someone ill so that they can continue to be in a uh, caretaking role. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and there's and they yeah they also get like they get like kudos and respect and mm-hmm. love for being you know such a, a selfless yeah, caregiver because yeah. it should be right. Oh, you stayed with them. Yeah. Look at you go. Yeah. 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 Right. And, so, and he does break both legs again yeah, during just, the the big uh, finale. The big so. finale. <laughs> yeah. How did you feel about the big finale, Shrishma? Because it is um, uh, pretty low impact. I mean, it's literally he's flashing light lights in this guy's face. Yeah, it was little the, like uh, like hectic. Like I felt like they did they speed it up a bit. Like they like. Yeah, they ramp up the the speed of like the neighbors speed, rushing out, yeah. and also. Um, um, yeah, they, they do I play mean, with this. I, I'm like not this. sure why they needed to do that with those particular shots. I guess it does create some urgency, but it did kind of take me out of things because it is like an unusual yeah. uh, um, it device. Was, it was cool. I mean, like <laughs> for 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 what it was, I think. I mean, it was fine. I can't really say anything. <laughs> it was okay. Yeah, well. It's kind of awkward how he was just randomly now outside the window and then he fell and then he kind of floated. And then he broke his second leg. He does do uh, some floating. Stay tuned. There'll be more Jimmy Stewart floating <laughs> very shortly. Um, and with that sterling endorsement from you that, yeah, it was all right. Um, Shrishma Naik, do you have any final thoughts? Like, do it. Movie, Rear Window, 1954, Alfred Hitchcock, Grace Kelly, Jimmy Stewart, and a bunch of other people. That lady from Ghost and Mr. Chicken. 
Do we keep watching this thing? Yeah. Trishma, be honest. <laughs> so, I mean, I, okay. I did, it was a good movie. I, I can see like why, you know, for 1956, it was, you know, really smart. And the, the tools that he used to tell the story, which, you know, I'm not into the technical side of filmmaking. So I just watched the movie for what it is. And then what I, what I get out of it. That's why um, you're and here. just purely from that perspective, <laughs> I was, it was okay. Like I, I can't say that I would keep this movie. Okay. That's fair. Only Trish, I mean, I you're just, a wrecking I, ball. Like you, you take down these sacred cows, like nobody else. Like that's why you're on the program because I you don't fuck what, what history says. <laughs> I just wasn't entertained by it. I mean, it was good. Um, mm-hmm. but I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Okay. So it's a no from you. It's a very like, it's like a maybe yes. <laughs> well, look, Oh, let's address something that we didn't really touch on at all uh, in our talk, but I mean, okay. So there is uh zero minority representation in this movie, but otherwise. There was, I don't there was know a telephone was, call. It was a telephone call. Yeah. And it was oh. very clearly. For the babysitter. Yeah. Oh it, was awful. it was awful. He calls his cop friend yeah. and there's a lady on the other line. And clearly the message that they were trying to send is that it's, you know, an African-American lady taking care oh. of the baby. Definitely. definitely. Okay. Um, you could tell okay. by the, the, the language. It, it was really char- um, over the top. Caricature of, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Well, I was going to say this, otherwise this movie comes through pretty clean and like through modern eyes, but yeah, that doesn't age really well. So, um, okay. That's, we put that in the no column, put a check there. Um, <laughs> and that's enough to just ruin everything for Shrishman Ike, who says it wasn't that, that what, it wasn't that, carpet. but it was, a uh, it was the dude, Jimmy Stewart, who was whiny the whole time. But I mean, like, you'd again, also I be whiny if you broke your leg and couldn't move. Yeah. For six but weeks. I think, like I said, I think the 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 concept of the movie has been remade so many times in our lifetime since mm-hmm. then. So in a way, it lives on anyway. But I, I just, you know, it was okay. It was average. You like the idea, you of a of a murder mystery with peeping. Exactly. Not right. okay. I okay. could do without the peeping, I suppose. Like I, you know, I'm a I'm a sucker it's for a good murder on the peeping. mystery. Yeah, and this so you're fine with the premise, the execution, yeah. a little lackluster. It's fair, Trishma. It's fair. This is your opinion. It's a no from Trishma. She hates it. Sorry, moving Alfred. right along. <laughs> Keep going now, Rose. My sister and everybody's. Uh, 1954's Rear Window. Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, Cary Grant not in this movie. Jimmy Stewart is in this movie. Uh, Tippi Hedren not in this movie. Grace Kelly in this movie. Do we keep watching it? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Great. I, I mean, sure. okay. I'll just, I, I will only add because it's Grace Kelly and she's fucking gorgeous. I know. You only get 11, 11 movies with Grace. She yeah. has Keep them all. a perfect mouth. I mean, she's the mouth queen. Like, that's a weird expression, but she's got a great mouth. <laughs> Sorry. That's so if Audrey, that- if Audrey is the eyebrow champion, Grace Kelly is the mouth champion. Great mouth. It's interesting. I just think it's the whole face all together. Oh, no, no. It is the whole. Uh, come on. I'm just picking. A highlight the whole thing is fantastic so all right okay. you it's a yes from you because we yeah. got to look at grace kelly um yeah. okay wonderful Catherine sherlock 1954's rear window all those people i just referenced some of whom are in this movie some of whom are not in this movie uh but do we keep watching said movie yes i think so because it's the original and i think it probably beats any remake or rehash of this concept um i think it's done for its time exceptionally well yeah so i think it's definitely yes i will agree with you it is a yes but shrishma it's a borderline yes for me because watching this seeing it through the eyes of somebody you know trying to see it through your eyes who's who didn't grow up with this or you know not familiar with it or whatever look it's kind of it's a little sleepy, you know, like literally he is mm-hmm. falling asleep mid movie. It moves at a pretty glacial pace when compared to modern storytelling, 
I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I mean, it it moves as quickly as it needs to move to tell its story, but that pace is slow, and it is a lot of just adult conversations about when are we getting married, and then with some intrigue mixed in as we go along. But I totally can see how this would be difficult for a modern movie goer to maybe maybe this isn't your first Hitchcock because it's almost two hours long too, which is fairly lengthy for this era and this type of movie. I would say. Um, but that being said, you know, Grace Kelly, Jimmy Stewart, we make fun of them, but like, it's a, it's a fine performance, uh, from him and also the, the craft and the filmmaking, you know, we've talked about Hitchcock's and his skills, uh, at length. We don't need to go into it here, but like the man knows how to put a movie together. And, uh, this one is pretty successful in being uh, intriguing and has lasted till today so it's uh three out of four are gonna keep it but before we wrap things up let's go to our boom room let's talk about artifacts this is a thing that we do uh by the way if you would like to hear more of our program beyond the free feed you can go to our patreon we call it the boom room where you will find our first 50 episodes twice as long the full conversation on all of those films uh, and also find out what artifacts we have already gathered for our fabulous museum of mid-century life. But what do we want to take from Rear Window? Shrishma Naik, what artifact would you like to keep from this to put into our lovely museum? I think I will take his binoculars. Oh, that's a good one. That's really good. They're nice binos. That's a. You that's know, a I have set. nice yeah. views that I can use it for. Yeah, Totally. Uh, great. You've got it. Binos are in Dr. Sister. What would you like to put into the boom room? I loved all of Grace's clothes, I um, um, but if I have to choose one, I'm going to choose the second black dress that she was wearing that sort of had not the black and white one, but she had the second one that was all black, but had like a very sheer short sleeve top on it. And I just loved that dress. They were all the clothes were impeccable. I was like, I want that top. I want that skirt. I want all of those dresses, but that one is the most like understated elegance. Mm. Okay. You've got it. It's going to go into our costume wing uh, or wardrobe wing. Basically if Grace Kelly's wearing it, I want it. Yeah, how did you feel about the pearls? By the way, she's uh, she's rocking those pearls like they've never been rocked before. Yeah, I mean, this is what I mean by like my whole opening here was that it was like a sexy little murder mystery. Like, there's a whole lot of like, like smooching and lap sitting vibe going on with the great clothes and the pearls and Ugh, you know this poor woman somebody give her some attention and some affection for I mean, my god, god she's like undressing him with her eyes and like hanging all over him and he's just like whoa, whoa, whoa. cannot be bothered <laughs> no he's off unless there's some subtext that like his accident has rendered him useless down there or something like that like and he can't address <laughs> it but like that is very sub 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 subtext that is not I mean, but it isn't mystery. Like maybe that's the real mystery here is like, why won't you sleep with this woman? For God's sake. Okay. Anyway, your outfits, <laughs> the, the sexy outfits. Outfit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great. You got it. It's in the boom room. Sherlock, what do you want to put into our fabulous museum of mid-century life? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I also love just the outfits. I think if I were going to choose a dress, it would be the last one. She was in the white with the the one that she did all the adventuring in, the white one oh, with like yeah. the mm-hmm. beautiful oh, yeah. autumnal flowers. Mm-hmm. When she's passing um, through that that little passage where you see the the, the next street over, and she stops mm-hmm. with the the letter, the the weird letter, and she gives mm-hmm. that little like mischievous look. I mean, be still, my heart. Come on, Jimmy Stewart. What's your problem? <laughs> what is this? But okay, Catherine, you got it. The costume wing is just expanding. well. No, no, I don't know that we can have two dresses. Oh, okay, okay. Why not? There's so many great ones to choose from. It's our museum, I mean. Yeah. Unless you want to take the lobster thermidor. I was just going to say that lobster. Tempting. (laughs) (laughs) That's great right about now. Yeah. No, maybe his camera and the big long lens. Oh, yeah. 
there you go. I mean, this, yeah, it's a movie about watching. Like, so yeah, why exactly. wouldn't we take all the watchables? So we got the binos. We've got the telephoto lens. That's That works for me. I like Actually, it. I quite like his telephone, the old telephone with the, mm, the yeah. looking thing. That was quite. No, not you, Roger. The other person on the telephone that he was talking to. It was just Roger again. I was very surprised. Um, okay, so you want the telephone? Yeah, I think the telephone. Okay. I mean, it gets a lot of use in this picture. It's yeah, very exactly. telephone heavy, telephone tech. Mm. Really got a boost out of this one. Uh, okay, you got it. Telephone for Sherlock. And for me, this is going to blow your mind, you guys. I know you all think that maybe you know what I'm going to pick, but it's not that. I'm going to take something I've never seen before, but oh. apparently existed. Uh, there's a shot as we watch the dog dig up the, the flowers in the backyard of the Thorwald's apartment. Couldn't help but notice that they have a garden hose attached. But it's not like a standard uh, green garden hose that we're accustomed to. It's clear. It's perfectly clear. And that's what I would like to keep. I've never seen one of those. We're making perfectly clear garden hoses? Never seen one. Yes, I, I use perfectly clear hose all of the time in the lab. Uh, okay, okay, okay. But for sciencey things, right? You work yeah, in the science. Okay. Science yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that like tubes. Have yeah, I mean, white white bore before. as well. You know, I mean, it's so it could take some flow. I'm like, well, okay. I mean, but to see it out in the wild, like, when was the last time? When, yeah, when did that happen? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's, it's probably, right? probably not. Um, yeah, the same. I'm just materials. thinking. You know, for uh, I mean, as fresh as that water might be being piped down to the city from upstate as it is, I mean, it's still going to uh, accumulate some kind of detritus or, you know, it's going to, it's going to yeah, stain. It's there might be going to be like out. algae in that. Like, yeah, nobody isn't that why it is clear? Because you, otherwise, you know, you're exposing it to sunlight and mm -hmm. it'll get and things living in it. This is my guess, Catherine, that this is why it did not stay on shelves mm -hmm. for very long. I'm going to do some yeah. research into garden hoses. I'll, I'll come back with more info <laughs> for you. But I feel like this is something that we need to preserve for our modern eyes. So I'm bringing it back with us. Clear garden hose. Carolyn cannot believe it. <laughs> I thought someone at least would have like the basket winch for the doggy. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh. That's a good one. Anybody want to trade out for the, the dog no. uh, lifter? The no. Stevedore. Okay. That's it, you guys. We've just wrapped up Rear Window. If you at home agree or disagree with any of our points, uh, please reach out to us. Party line at oldmovietimemachine.com. And next Wednesday, life carries on within the realm of Hitchcocktober. We are going to hit you with our third and final Alfred Hitchcock film for the season, 1958's Vertigo. That's right. More Jimmy Stewart coming at you. Shrishma Naik, I know you're excited. A former San Francisco police detective juggles wrestling with his personal demons and becoming obsessed with the hauntingly beautiful woman he has been hired to trail who may be deeply disturbed. Some consider this to be the finest motion picture ever crafted by humanity it is 1958's vertigo and it is coming next week uh thank you so much for listening though on behalf of the entire international panel of experts we wish you uh best of luck in the forthcoming business week i guess and we'll see you wednesday happy watching movies yeah enjoy everybody we'll see you then bye bye, bye.